All right, so the first sections are all about ratios. So the way you solve a ratio is cross multiplication. So you're gonna say nine times V equals seven times seven. And then you're gonna solve for X, right? Or V, whatever. What I wanna point out on these is that if you have a plus or minus, make sure you group it. Nine times the group X minus six equals seven times eight. Because in the second type, you will have to distribute, all right? While they look different, the next set is really the same thing. You are just setting up the ratios. Figure out where the one is that you are trying to solve for. Put a variable there. All right? And then set up a ratio. If it's 30 over 6, if you set it up that way, numerator, denominator, then this must be your numerator. And the x must be your denominator. Don't forget, you can reduce. You can reduce the 30 over the 6 at that point, and then you can solve. But the entire first page is nothing but ratios. <clears throat> this section is asking, are they similar? On your quiz, some of you put not similar, and then you gave me a reason. You can't have both. If it's similar, you will give me a reason, and you will give me a similarity statement. If it is not similar, your entire answer will be not similar, okay? And so what you're looking for is, do they have two angles the same? Then it's angle, angle similarity. Are the sides in the same proportion? Then it is side, side, side similarity. Do you have two sides in the same proportion with one angle congruent? Then it is side, angle, side similarity. So for something like this, I already have the angle. So I know that I have this. I am just going to test the ratios of the sides. So if I don't know how to do this, I'm going to say, well, shortest side here is 18 over shortest side here, 42. That should equal next side here, the longest side here, over the longest side here. If those reduce to the same fraction, then you will have side angle side similarity, all right? Which they do, okay? They both reduce, all right? So, um, if you have side angle side, part of your answer is going to be giving me Y. The other part is going to be giving me the triangle, all right? The triangle. You must have the triangle symbol. This one starts with P, so this one must start with the one that is congruent to P, which is F. Then I would travel along one of the sides. If I go to the sh down the shortest side, I get to R. R is last. So the one that is last will be the one that travels down the shortest side, H, which means that Q is or F, um, Q could should correspond to G. So it's going to be G, then H. So just figure out which ones correspond when you write that one. So if they are similar, similarity statement and the Y's, which is these are one of your Y's. That's your Y. All right. The next set is just, yes, they are similar. Now find the side. So in this case, you want to just make sure you do the right order. E corresponds to itself. D corresponds to V. And C corresponds to W. All right? So that means you need to set it up correctly. You need to say, well, if I am saying for this triangle right here, E to V on top, which is 21, then that should correspond to my X. All right, if 27 is on bottom, E to W, then that should correspond to the side. And so you just need to make sure in all of these that you just set them up correctly. Set them up correctly, okay? These two are identical. This just has a variable in it. So you're gonna have to just solve like you did at the very first page when you had a plus or minus. You're gonna have to group that wherever it is in your ratio. We practice these because y'all struggled the most on your quiz with these, all right? This one right here, this side right here is the geometric mean between these two smaller sides, okay? Um, which in this case, you're not solving for one of the smaller sides, but you need to know what you're solving for. 
If I'm looking at the other pieces that are geometric means, this side right here is the geometric mean between this piece closest to it and the entire hypotenuse, okay? So if I look at this next one, this is the geometric mean between that and the entire hypotenuse, the entire hypotenuse. So when you set this guy up, you're gonna have to subtract the nine at the end because you will have solved for the entire thing here and you need that piece of it. Okay, so know what you have and what you're solving for with these. New ones, but these are similar, all right? You can do these multiple ways. In this case, you have the entire piece. So you could say three compared to the entire piece of 12 is the same as my variable compared to the entire piece of 20. So you can say three over 12 equals X, what I don't know over 20, right? Many ways to set it up, but make sure you set it up with comparable parts. For this, you would say the 20 for this piece, the 35 to this piece, which means you're gonna to have to calculate what that piece is. 22 minus the 4x plus two, all right? So always know what you're looking for. Always know what you're looking for. Don't just assume that the numbers they gave you are the exact things you're gonna use for these ratios. You may have to calculate into it when you set up your ratios, all right? So always know what compares to what. All right. The first one is just asking for the ratios. All right. So they gave us 27 and they gave us 81. Those are pointing to the same pieces on these figures. So the first ratio I would have is 27 to 81. You're going to want to reduce that. Okay. You're going to want to reduce that. Um, can you reduce this, I guess, is the first question. Yes. What goes into both of those? Nine, all right, so if we reduce it by nine, 27 divided by nine is what? Three, and 81 divided by nine is, can I reduce it anymore? One third, all right, one third. And so <clears throat> once you reduce it, then it's asking for a couple more things here. This is asking for first that ratio right there that we just found, all right, which is one third. So the ratio of that's one third. The next ratio that they're asking for is for the area, all right? The area, um, or sorry, the um, surface area and then the volume. So if I do that, the next one's going to be that same fraction squared, and the next one's gonna be that same fraction cubed, all right? Good luck, all right? So we're gonna say one third. If I will square it, we get one ninth. If I cube it, I get one over 27. These are my answers. That's all you're doing there. Find the ratio, square it, and cube it, all right? Then you're gonna use that here, all right? Surface area, that was squared. They gave me the original. Um, so I have to square this guy. So if I'm gonna set up surface area, and I need this, two over x, what I'm looking for, should be equal to this guy squared should equal that guy squared. Which means if I'm looking for volume, 13 over the volume that I'm looking for should be this guy cubed, one over 64. So it's the same thing as I've been doing the entire test, I'm doing cross multiplication. It's just knowing how to set up your ratios, knowing how to set up your ratios.